fans of high quality entertainment. Before I talk about the main subject, Marillion, I just wanted to let you know that I received two more CDs in the mail by the Moody Blues. This one, to our children's children's children, I've never heard. And so I'm really looking forward to hearing this for the very first time. Lyrics, very nice booklet. The case, though, uh, I got this from Amazon. The case is, of course, damaged. I don't even, there it is, right there. Broken. But I have empty cases to replace it with. And Seventh Soldier, I've never heard. Although, I do know the song, I'm just a singer in a rock and roll band. But that's about it. Bob Dylan should do a uh, classic rock songs uh, tribute album, and he could sing songs like, I'm just a singer in a rock and roll band. Thank you. So, Seventh Sojourn. Before they took a little mini break for a few years. And then the lyrics, and uh, it's another very nice book. Looking forward to listening to these two albums. And last night, besides listening to Marillion, I listened to Threshold of a Dream, which I've heard before. With the, uh, I finally bought it because of the Glenn Kellaway CD exchange. I really loved this. So finally bought it and enjoyed it again last night. And for the very first time, I've heard Days of Future Days of Future Past. I had never heard the complete album. And I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So because of the CD exchange, I started to take an interest in Marillion. Uh, Glenn had given me the album Fear, which took me a few listens, like I've said a few times. It took me a few listens to appreciate, but I ended up absolutely loving it. And uh, I also bought... Brave, which I've only heard once, but I really liked. And their latest, An Hour Before It's Dark, which I'm, you know, still, I've only played it maybe, I think, three times. I really love the album, though, but still getting familiar with it. So these four albums by Marillion are with the their original singer, Fish, and... You know, in the early 80s, when Marillion started making albums, and this was the way Fish <laughs> looked in the magazines and everything, I just, I thought it was kind of, just not my thing. I thought, kind of doing a, a bad parody of Genesis with Peter Gabriel with the makeup and everything, and so I never bothered. I, I was, I can be a music snob, just like I think all of us can be in some ways. Uh, 
until you actually listen to the the artist. So I started last night listening to my very first Marillion album with Fish. I started with the debut script for a jester's tear. And right away it kind of reminds me of the Genesis era with Peter Gabriel. But, you know, uh, not necessarily copying Genesis, but, you know, being inspired by them because, you know, Genesis is, of course, one of the greats. And so it reminded me of early Genesis. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. And I, I was really impressed with Fish's vocals. And then came Fugazi, which I played next, and I really liked this one too. In fact, I think I liked it, I actually liked it more than, than the debut. No, I've only heard all four of these albums once, but I was so impressed with all of them. So this one I really love too. And I'd heard nothing but good things about their third album, Misplaced Childhood. So I put this on. It grabbed my soul. Fish's vocals, the band. I'd, I'd said, you know, with their later albums, it's almost like sometimes the lead singer, Steve Hogworth, is, you know, he's up front and then the band is kind of in the background. But that's really not the case. <laughs> it just took me a few listens to soak up the later Marillion. I love them. But this, the musicianship is as good as Genesis and Yes. Just the musicianship blew me away and Fish's vocals. They, like I said, his vocal, something about his vocals. I never knew, I, <laughs> I never knew he was such an amazing singer. It just blew me away. And that's only from one lesson. And sometimes it's not good. <laughs> you know, you, you play an album for the first time and you absolutely love it. You get tired of it quickly. I, I can guarantee myself that's not going to happen. With, that it's not going to happen. But just for the first listen, I was floored, as you can tell. And Marillion, just from the few albums I've heard, Where were they in my life all these years? This is the kind of music I absolutely love, you know, along with Yes and Genesis. Marillion are one of the greatest prog bands ever, and that's with only listening to maybe 20% of their discography. I mean, even if the rest of it's not as good, which I know it is, I, I know it is good. Uh, I, I was just, wow. The lyrics by Fish, they're, they're, they're just so... What I love about Fish's lyrics, too, is he's not always looking to rhyme words. He's just telling a story. Sometimes the lyrics don't rhyme or anything, and that's great. He's uh, telling a story, and it's just absolutely amazing. So, the final one I heard last night, and the, sadly the final one with Fish, Clutching at Straws, for some reason, I thought this was a, a kind of a weak follow-up to Misplaced Childhood. But then I looked up on Rate Your Music, and it's actually most fans' favorite. It had the highest rating of the first four albums, which kind of surprised me. And then I played it, and I was thinking, there's no way that this can be as good as this. And I was wrong. <laughs> but... Just for one listen, I would say it equals their third album. And it might even better it because, it, you know, I need to play it more. But once again, uh, and a lot of the lyrics here are, you know, Fish not being happy being in the band and kind of hinting that, you know, he'd be leaving or whatever. And uh, just... I, I'm just so excited to, to get to know the, all of these four albums more. Uh, so I was impressed with this as much as Misplaced Childhood. Take two. 
So yeah, I was as impressed with clutching at straws as I was misplaced childhood. And then, like I said, this one was really impressive too. Maybe the only one where I, I, I wasn't blown away was their debut because it reminded me maybe a bit too much of Yes, but I need to listen to it a few more times. So Fisher's vocals, he, you, when you hear his vocals on these four albums, you definitely hear traces of Peter Gabriel, early Genesis Peter Gabriel, and you also hear Phil Collins, <laughs> uh, his vocals, kind of a mixture of those two at their best. And then, uh, but he's unique. Like, I don't want to say he's copying either of those great singers. Fish is his own man. And he is just, like I said, excellent. Amazing. So after that, I was thinking, okay, you know, some pan, some. So I know that some fans gave up on Marillion after Fish left. They didn't want to have anything to do with the new singer. And I do get that because I'm kind of uh, that way too with certain bands. It's like, you know, just, just the original band. But I had been enjoying the later albums a lot. And so after I played the first four Marillion albums, I played their latest again an hour before it's dark and I was I was kind of thinking in my mind okay Steve isn't going to be as good as fish on the vocals but you know what he Steve is such a unique singer just like fish is totally different excellent singer though I absolutely loved this hearing it last night so I was happy <laughs> that okay the the fish era if 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 Merlin fans say nothing beats the fish air, I can see that. But I'm really impressed with later Merlin too. So I'm just excited to start taking this journey, being a Merlin fan. I'm definitely, in time, going to buy probably all of their albums. But I want to kind of just concentrate <laughs> on the ones I have right now. And the, the Fear album that Glenn Kellaway started my journey with, I, need, I still need to get, and I'll get that probably next. But, it is kind of, you know, musical, like I said, musical snobbery that we all can have. And so when I first saw Marillion, I just saw them as a copy of Genesis and you know, thinking to myself, nothing is going to be as good as early Genesis for prog rock, unless it's maybe yes. But I just, and the guitar work, the bass, the drums, the keyboards, it's not all just about the vocals with either Fish or Steve. The band is just totally superb. If you love prog rock, if you love early Genesis, if you love Genesis with Phil Collins on vocals, if you love Yes, if you love prog rock in general, this this should be right up your alley if you've not heard it. It is, this might go down as one of my all-time favorite albums, and I've only heard it once, <laughs> but it, it might be I don't think I've ever been blown away by an album on a first listen as I have been with this. And then to follow it up with, <laughs> yeah, to follow it up with clutching at straws and not thinking, well, there's no way they can match uh, their third album, but they did with this. Even though the band was, you know, kind of at odds with each other and especially with Fish. And, uh, I am a fan of Marillion. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.